Hello, I welcome you all in this course on steam and gas power systems. Today we will discuss efficiency and critical pressure for the flow inside a nozzle and a diffuser. As we know that for the flow through a nozzle, the change in enthalpy dH is equal to minus C d C change in kinetic energy. And from momentum equations, we have derived that C d C is equal to minus V d P minus W f. V is the specific volume, W s is the friction loss. So, if you compare these two equations, then we get minus d h is equal to minus v d p minus w f or this is d w f, d w f right or d h is equal to v d p plus d w f. For h, we already know that h is equal to u plus p v or d h is equal to d u plus p d uh, v this is v plus v d p. Now, if we compare these two equations, we will find that <laughs> that this v d p and v d p is in common in these two then this is going to be equal to this one delta w d w f and this is nothing but heat transfer del q is equal to d u plus p d v. Now, if you want to depict this on enthalpy entropy diagram, this is enthalpy specific enthalpy and specific entropy. There is a two pressure lines, this is P 1 and this is P 2. Expansion is taking place from state 1 to state 2. There is a there is a heat transfer, suppose friction is there, there is a heat transfer. So, instead of following this isentropic uh, line, vertical line, the process will follow this 2 dash, right. <coughs> now, at this 2 dash, this difference, this difference in enthalpy, this difference in enthalpy is nothing but dWf and because the, there is a rise in entropy also, right and the rise in entropy will be dWf by T integral. So, this is the rise in entropy due to friction and this is the loss in enthalpy drop. When there is a loss in enthalpy drop, definitely the velocity of uh, vapor or, or, or air coming out of the nozzle will be less in comparison to that in the case when expansion is taking place from 1 to 2. Here efficiency of the nozzle comes into the picture. Now, efficiency of the nozzle is 100 percent when the expansion is isentropic expansion. This total enthalpy drop is converted into the kinetic energy, right. But here in this case what is happening only part of this is converted into the kinetic energy and this part is going in terms of increasing entropy of the fluid. So, the efficiency of the nozzle is going to be h 1 minus h 2 dash divided by h 1 minus h 2 right or we can write c 2 dash square minus c 1 square divided by c 2 square minus c 1 square. Always while doing the doing the analysis of the nozzle we have neglected this. So, we can take always take as c 2 dash square minus divided by c 2 square and this is this c 2 
dash by c 2 is nothing but it is velocity coefficient. We can say velocity coefficient k. Now, in case of gas uh, nozzles, efficiency can also be expressed as C p uh, T 1 minus T 2 dash divided by C p T 1 minus T 2. And then the C p and C p will be cancelled out. So, efficiency will be T 1 minus T 2 dash divided by T 1 minus T 2. Right. Uh, there is another term in the nozzles is coefficient of discharge C d. So, coefficient of discharge is actual is the ratio of actual flow divided by the ideal flow for all, all passages coefficient of discharge for any passage is actual flow divided by ideal flow. Now, let us take case of diffuser. Diffuser the pressure energy is increased at the cost of kinetic energy. So, 1 2 this is 2 dash. So, efficiency of the diffuser will be H 2 minus H 1 divided by H 2 dash minus H 1. Right. Now, we will drive an expression for the mass of discharge through the nozzle. How much discharge is taking place through the nozzle? We do not have expression yet for this. So, as we know for the flow of through nozzle C 2 square minus C 1 square by 2 is equal to minus 1 to 2 V d p. This we have driven from C d c is equal to minus V d p. Right. C 1 we can always neglect. So, C 2 square by 2 is equal to integral P 2 to P 1 V d p. We always know that for polytropic, this is a polytropic process, not this one, expansion through nozzle, expansion through nozzle, state 1 to state 2 is a polytropic process. So, we can always say P v raised to power n is equal to constant, right, or v is equal to c raised to power 1 by n and p raised to power minus 1 by n. Now, putting this value v here, we will be getting p 2 to p 1 c raised to power 1 by n p raised to power minus 1 by n d p. Now, we can easily integrate this equation. Now, we can easily integrate this equation and we will be getting c 2 square by 2 is equal to c raised to power 1 by n p raised to power 1 minus 1 by n divided by 1 minus 1 by n from p 2 to p 1. Right. Now, c 2 square by 2 is equal to or we will say that c 2 square is 2 n over n minus 1. Now, c raised to power 1 by n, c raised to power 1, uh, 1 by n is, is equal to p raised to power 1 by n and v. So, here we can write p 1 raised to power 1 by n v 1 p 1 raised to power 1 minus 1 by n minus again c we can always write p 2 raised to power 1 by n v 2 p 2 raised to power 1 minus 1 by n right. 
Now, if we further simplify this, then C 2 square is equal to 2 n over n minus 1, this is P 1 V 1 minus P 2 V 2, right. We have velocity, so terms for the velocity C 2 is under root 2 n upon n minus 1 P 1 V 1 minus P 2 V 2. Now, we have to find the mass flow rate. So, mass flow rate is C 2 at the exit A 2 divided by V 2, right. Now, in order to achieve this, what we can do? We can take C 2 is equal to under root 2 n upon n minus 1, uh, we can take out P 1 V 1. So, we will be getting 1 minus P 2 by P 1 multiplied by V 2 by V 1, fine. Now, V 2 by V 1 is equal to P 1 by P 2 raised to power 1 by n or we can write V 2 by V 1 is equal to P 2 by P 1 raised to power minus 1 by n. Now, putting this value here V 2 by V 1 here, we will get C 2 is equal to under root 2 n upon n minus 1 P 1 V 1 1 minus P 2 by P 1 raised to power 1 minus 1 by n. Now, C 2 multiplied by A 2, okay. so C 2 multiplied by A 2 by V 2 will give us the mass flow rate. So, this is going to be equal to A 2. Now, V 2 is nothing but V 2 is equal to V 1 P 1 by or P 2 by P 1 raised to power minus 1 by n. P 2 we can take from here, P 2 by P 1 raised to power minus 1 by n multiplied by V 1. And if this goes inside, then 2 n upon n minus 1 P 1 V 1, because this V 1 will get squared. So, this is P 1 by V 1 and this will go take an inside the bracket. this we will take inside the bracket. So, this will become P 2 by P 1 raised to power 2 by n minus P 2 by P 1 this 2 by n plus 1 minus 1 by n. I am repeating we have taken from here we have taken out P 1 V 1 we will got, we get the velocity C 2. Now, C 2 velocity at the exit area of the cross section area at the exit divided by spacing volume at the exit. So, velocity of the exit we will get from here. We have further simplified this equation, we will taken we have taken P 1 even out and this expression is modified by this expression. Then C 2 is multiplied by A 2 divided by V 2 and V 2 we have taken P 2 by P 1 raised to power minus 1 by n multiplied by V 1. This expression is taken inside. So, we are, we are getting P 1 by V 1 and this expression. If you further simplify this, you will get m is equal to A 2 under root 2 n upon n minus 1 P 1 by V 1 P 2 by P 1 raised to power 2 by n minus P 2 by P 1 raised to power uh, n plus 1 by n. This 2 by n minus 1 by n is 1 by n, 1 by n plus 1, n plus 1 by n. Now, this is the mass flow rate or we can take here also, this here also m by A 2. Mass flow rate per unit area is this, right. Now, here I want to have maximum discharge. This is about the discharge through the nozzle. Now, I want to have maximum discharge 
in order to have maximum discharge I should differentiate this equation this is a normal practice. So, and then this term these terms are constant inlet pressure and inlet specific volume in a nozzle is constant right and is constant right. We want to find for what pressure ratio the discharge is maximum when discharge this pressure ratio is 1 discharge is 0. Obviously, when the leading side and trailing side if the pressure is same P 2 by P 1 is same there is no flow, but when we start decreasing the P 2 the flow the fluid starts flowing through the nozzle, but it does not mean that we may if this we make this expression uh, 0 the flow become infinite. Normally what happens after attaining a certain value the flow becomes constant irrespective of the value of this pressure ratio that is known as choking of the nozzle. So, first of all we will differentiate this in, in fact we will take a function y is equal to uh, p 2 by p 1 raised to power 2 rest are constant. So, minus p 2 by p 1 raised to power n plus 1 by n. So, we will differentiate y on this we can be taken as for the sake of convenience r y is equal to r 2 by n minus r n plus 1 by n y dash is 2 by n r raised to power 2 by n minus 1 minus n plus 1 by n r raised to power n plus 1 by n minus 1 and this is equal to 0. So, 2 by n r raised to power 2 by n minus 1 is equal to n plus 1 by n r 1 by n. Now, if we further simplify this r raised to power 1 by n minus 1 is equal to n plus 1 by 2 or r 1 minus 1 by n is equal to 2 by n plus 1 or we can write this this ratio r is 2 by n plus 1 raised to power n by n minus 1. So, we have to maintain this pressure ratio p 2 by p 1 in order to have maximum flow through nozzle. If the pressure ratio is less than this flow will not increase right. So, if we want to show on a, on, on a graph it is going flow is going to be something like this. This is P 2 by P 1 this is 1 and it is decreasing in this direction right and this is mass flow rate. So, first of all it will increase and then it will become stagnant and this is known as critical pressure ratio. Now, for uh, steam for saturated steam suppose saturated steam is getting expanded <coughs> in that case uh, the value of n is equal to 1.135. If the value of n is equal to 1.135 you are putting here in that case the r is going to be r is equal to p 2 by p 1 is going to be 0 0.5774. This is for saturated steam when saturated steam is getting expanded in a nozzle. Suppose steam is superheated then it is n is equal to 1.3. In that case r is going to be equal to 0 0.5457. Simply just putting the value of n is equal to 1.3 here we will be getting this expression. Suppose it is a gas nozzle. So, n is equal to gamma suppose it is air 1.414 1.4 in that case it is going to be 0 0.528. So, for any value of n or we can find the pressure ratio for which the flow is maximum for during flow through a nozzle.
Now let us go back to the same equation, right? So we will take P2 V2 common C2 here 2 n over n minus 1 P2 V2 P1 by P2 V1 by V2 minus 1, right? Now V1 by V2 is equal to P2 by P1 raised to power 1 by n. So, we can write C2 is equal to under root 2 n over n minus 1 P2 V2 uh, P2 by P1, right? Uh, 1 by n minus 1 because this will reverse then it will be minus 1 and minus 1. Now again C2 is equal to under root. Now we can put P2 by P1 here for the choking condition P2 by P1 is equal to 2 n plus 1 raised to power n upon n minus 1. We have already driven this. So, 2 multiplied by n upon n minus 1 P2 V2, P2 by P1 is equal to 2 by n plus 1 n upon n minus 1 and this is 1 minus sorry yes 1 minus n upon n minus 1, right. We can easily simplify this equation to find the value of C2 at the throat C2 is equal to now under root 2 n upon n minus 1 P2 V2 here this 1 minus n n minus 1. So, and this n and n will be cancelled out this n and n will be cancelled out this is n minus 1 this is 1 minus n. So, this expression is going to be n plus 1 by 2 minus 1. Now, C2 is under root 2 n over n minus 1 P2 V2 divided by 2 n minus 1. Now, this n minus 1 we will get cancelled with this n minus 1, this 2 will be get will get cancelled with this 2 and the final expression is going to be C2 is equal to under root n P2 V2, right. So, in a nozzle in a nozzle if the flow is adiabatic, adiabatic and frictionless the ideal flow this is 1 and this is throat of the nozzle 2, right. The, the velocity is going to be n p 2 v 2 and this is nothing but sonic velocity of the fluid n p 2 v 2 is going to be sonic velocity of the fluid at this particular uh, condition. That is all for today. Thank you very much.